Todd Frosch, Detroit Medical Center. Uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, all inside meniscus repair. I uh, appreciate the invite to speak here. Uh, uh, so we know that there's almost no indication for arthroscopic meniscectomy today. Studies have shown uh, that there's no advantage of arthroscopic partial meniscectomy over sham surgery or over physical therapy and should be avoided if possible. Uh, oftentimes we hear that mechanical symptoms are an indication to perform partial meniscectomy. Uh, this paper you see here was from the f uh, group from Finland that did the sham surgery for meniscus tears and they found that partial meniscectomy offered no benefit uh, for patients with mechanical symptoms versus the sham surgery. And in fact, about half or more of the patients still had some degree of mechanical symptoms at two years post-operative. They suggested that the mechanical symptoms were, li were likely a result of something other than the meniscus tear. Unfortunately, arthroscopic partial meniscectomy often results in worsening degenerative changes such as those seen here in this uh, MRI. Aside from uh, the increased risk of osteoarthritis, we know that partial men meniscectomy has effects on tibial femoral stability and therefore should be avoided at the time of uh, cruciate ligament reconstruction. It also affects coronal alignment. Uh, Fairbanks uh, helped us understand the role of the uh, meniscus about 70 years ago when he published his series of radiographic changes that occur after meniscectomy. These are radiographs from his paper. We see the ridge or osteophyte formation after uh, six years on the image on the right. And this is the radiographic flattening of the femoral condyle that occurs, and we call this the, uh, the Fairbanks sign. And lastly, we see some joint space narrowing that occurs simply from removal of the meniscus. This n narrowing seen here is only about five months postoperative. The meniscus functions to increase uh, the contact area and decrease the contact stresses in the compartment. Uh, the medial meniscus reduces about 50 to 70 percent of the load, uh, and the lateral meniscus slightly more than that. Uh, the contact stresses upon the articular cartilage increase by about 100 to 235 percent after men meniscectomy. Uh, this Fujifilm image shows how the contact pressures go up and the contact uh, area goes down considerably uh, with meniscectomy. And this serial meniscectomy study done about 12 years ago showed that the peak contact stresses uh, increased proportionally to the amount of meniscus uh, removed at the time of meniscectomy. So we should be judicious, judicious in the amount of meniscus removed if meniscectomy is chosen as a treatment. So I just made the case for avoiding meniscectomy. Well, how about uh, repair? Well, we know that the outcomes for a vertical longitudinal tear are about 80% successful, and it may be up to 90%. Uh, with a concurrent cruciate ligament reconstruction due to the so-called healing environment. Other types of tears such as horizontal and radial have been a bit more challenging in the past to get successful repairs. I've often heard that age is a relative contraindication for repair as well. I'm not really sure that that's true as these studies have found. In patients over 40 years of age, uh, Noyes found that uh, after repair of their menisci, 87% were non-symptomatic. And in Stedman's study, he found no difference in failure rates with patients under 40 versus those over 40. And both groups enjoyed high function and satisfaction at about 16 years post-op, regardless of age. Uh, some tears have been a bit more challenging to get a good repair, such as radial tears at a 27% reoperation rate and horizontal at 29% reoperation rate in Noise's paper from 20 years ago. Well, where are we now uh, with uh, meniscus repair? Uh, inside out uh, remains the gold standard. I use this technique routinely for my younger patients, those with complex tears and larger tears. Arthrex has a nice 2 fiber wire suture on a long meniscus repair needle, and they have this nice cannula here that you see uh, that is malleable and allows uh, uh, bending it for uh, far anterior and far posterior zones. This is a case of 17-year-old male uh, discus thrower, and we see that he has a complete radial tear through the junction of the anterior horn and mid-body of the lateral meniscus. This is a relatively common tear to see in young athletes. Uh, because of the zone of the tear, it's difficult to access with all inside uh, devices. Um, we see a complete radial tear here. Uh, the inside-out technique allows access to any zone and is very effective for a nice stable repair of this with uh, four uh, horizontal mattress sutures uh, tied over the capsule. And we see passing of sutures here for the inside-out technique and a very nice, stable uh, four horizontal mattress suture repair of a radial tear. So for all inside repair, uh, the, uh, the meniscus cinch has remained a trusted workhorse, and I've put in many, many of these with very good success. But now we have uh, the speed cinch. The speed cinch is the next generation of all inside repair. Uh, we see the ability with this to toggle the implants with a thumb or index finger. Uh, there's an adjustable depth stop you see here also to help avoid over penetration of the meniscus. 
Uh, this video here shows a vertical repair using the speed cinch. It features a low profile 2.0 coreless fiber wire suture with uh, small 1 by 5 millimeter peak implants. The knot is a pre-tied modified west end that tensions very easy. One of the best features of this is that it's a single handed operation so the surgeon can keep one hand on the scope and the other hand can fully do the meniscus repair. Uh, it also uses a 15 gauge needle with a low profile to avoid uh, meniscus damage. Uh, it also actively expels the peak implant uh, beyond the needle to reduce the exposure risk of the needle beyond the meniscus. Here we see a single-handed use of the speed cinch. Uh, we toggle the implants to start. I like to use a passport cannula for my repairs. Uh, this was a vertical compression suture placed for a horizontal cleavage tear in addition to some vertical loop stitches that you see that were already placed. Uh, the knot of this uh, uh, speed cinch tensions easily with either a disposable or a reusable uh, knot pusher cutter. And here we see the use of the meniscus cinch uh, pusher cutter. Uh, new instrumentation allows for repair of tears previously thought not uh, very amenable to repair, such as radial and horizontal cleavage tears. The knee scorpion has quickly become one of my favorite uh, and most reliable instruments for meniscus repair. Uh, we see a video here of uh, the use of the knee scorpion for repair of a tear near the meniscus root during a concurrent ACL reconstruction. So uh, the sutures are placed in a vertical loop and uh, can also be placed inverted. Uh, the knot is a standard arthroscopic knot of the uh, uh, surgeon's choice. Uh, the device is low profile, it has a slight up curve to match the meniscus anatomy. Um, you can use either a, a 0 or 2-0 uh, fiber wire suture, which can be placed in multiple configurations such as crossing, uh, horizontal loop, uh, or vertical loop, uh, etc. Uh, it's essential for these types of tears I listed here, such as radial, horizontal, flap, carrot beak, and root tears. Here, um, here in these photos we see a complete radial lateral meniscus tear at the hiatus. I repaired this with a knee scorpion with four horizontal loop sutures. Notice that the knots are below the meniscus. Uh, this can be accomplished by e either inverting the scorpion as space allows or use a zero fiber, line, fiber link suture to shuttle the suture underneath. Uh, we did a study of radial tears in our lab. One of our fellows, Tim Doig, compared inside out sutures uh, versus a horizontal loop suture with a scorpion and found that the horizontal loop suture was uh, as effective as inside out sutures. Uh, there were no differences in load to failure, stiffness, or gap formation. Well, why do we want to repair radial tears? Uh, Ashish Beatty in a study about eight years ago found that tears up to 60% of the meniscus didn't affect pressure or contact area much, but 90% certainly did, and it resulted in large increase in pressure and decreased contact area. Partial meniscectomy, these tears unfortunately resulted in further worsening uh, repair did improve the pressures and contact uh, area, but not quite to the intact state. And we see that graph uh, here. Well, how about horizontal cleavage tears, uh, which are often felt to be degenerative? A common treatment is a single leaflet resection. This study showed a 59% decrease in contact area and 55% increase in mean contact pressure after a single leaflet resection. In Jason Coe's study, the peak contact pressure has increased 36 to 43 percent with single leaflet resection. Well, how about repair of horizontal cleavage tears? Um, outcomes uh, appear to be fairly good based on Kurzweil's systematic review where uh, they found 78.6 percent clinical success on the nine uh, studies that they included. Uh, this is a video of the use of a knee scorpion to place vertical loose loop sutures of, uh, for a degenerative horizontal cleavage tear during MCL and PCL reconstruction in a 42-year-old cop. I chose this case because it shows the medial compartment well with the MCL injury. Uh, notice the use of the passport, uh, which allows easy passage of the instruments and sutures. Uh, the sutures can be placed at close intervals to allow tight compression of this type of a, uh, of a meniscus tear. So Arthrex has some very good data collected with the SOS database for all inside uh, repair. The database is up to 744 patients, 165 of them are out to two years post-op. The VAS scores are seen improving from 2.8 to 1.1 at two years uh, post-op. For the activities of daily living on the COOS, they improve from 72 to 90, uh, 95 at two years post-op. And lastly, the sports and recreational activities improve from 38 to 80 on the uh, COOS scale. In conclusion, we want to practice uh, meniscus preservation. Uh, the repair techniques are evolving. Arthrex offers some very nice options for meniscus all inside repair. 
Uh, the Speed Cinch is a one-handed device that provides efficient repair. Uh, the Knee Scorpion is critical for radial and horizontal tears. Outcomes from the SOS database and others reveal that meniscus repair is effective for both pain and function. Thank you.